Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. This is your friend, your host, uh, your mentor, Dharam Singh. And I'm very, very glad uh, to have my, my recent student uh, who became PMP, uh, Jamie, Jamie Mon. And uh, she's, she's wonderful. She did really well in her exam. And uh, we'll talk more about experience, of course. Uh, welcome, Jamie. Thank you so much. Happy to be here. And thank you all for joining. I hope that I can provide some interesting insights to all of you and um, any help as well. If you're looking to take your PMP or maybe you already have it and you're just looking to um, just kind of further your education. Perfect. Perfect. So uh, thank you. Thank you once again. And thank you all for joining this uh, webinar. And I'm sure it's going to be very informative and very, very lots of fun and lots, lots of learning for you. And uh, the best part is I have a PDU code approved, so I will be sharing the PDU code a little later. And uh, I will be announcing about a special offer uh, for the PMP experience. And, uh, and we'll talk more about that at later time. All right. Okay, so, uh, so no, look, another thing is I have been doing webinars with my PGMPs and PFMP students. So you are the lucky one, Jamie, as a, my first PMP student who come as a, uh, my, my guest as a PMP uh, in my webinar. So, so I'm very excited uh, to talk to one of my recent PMPs. That's great to hear, yeah, because I'm definitely on the first step of my certification journey. So I'm honored that you asked me to join this webinar and help answer some questions um, because yeah, definitely some of those other more advanced certifications I think would come in handy for me down the road as well. So uh, look, I'm looking forward to help you with your PGMP, PFMPs uh, as we get there. All right. So just a little bit more about Jamie. Jamie is coming from a very exciting place. You know, it's, they call it Universal Studio. So if you are into movies and you are into fun-loving rides and you know exciting place, so that's where you will be going. Uh, going to have fun in Universal Studio Orlando, and uh, I think they have you have uh, in LA. You have Los, An Los Angeles and the other part of the world. I don't know if you want to tell them. Um, any any other new coming? Yeah, so we also have um, a couple of other parks in Beijing. Um, I think there's also one in um, Singapore as well. So it's really exciting how uh, we have really fun offerings for people all over the world. And I heard that uh, in Dallas is also getting a Universal Studio, not the full fledged, but uh, for the for the kids level. Yes, we are. Yeah. So that's really exciting. We made uh, that announcement. Um, I think it was like a month or two ago. So yeah, we're expanding our offerings just here within the United States. Um, so it's just really exciting to see where the company is going. Yeah. So currently I'm in Dallas. So if I'm still here in Dallas, uh, so maybe I probably go there. I know it's not for the, for the adult, but yeah, I don't, I will find some place. Anyway. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, so look, um, you know, Jamie is coming with lots of experience in the project management space. And as I mentioned, she's coming from Universal Studio and she's looking after a lot of projects in the marketing space, so a lot of marketing initiatives, uh, which, which helps uh, Universal Studio to get more and more people to come and, and have fun. So, so that's where she's coming. From. You're working for the creative team and you have a production, you know, you work with the other stakeholders and you have a score budget, just like any projects. Absolutely. Yeah. And you are a strong communicator, you are a relationship builder and self-motivated individual. So that's where you're the exciting part. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would hope that others would consider or say the same about me as well, that, um, cause I take a lot of pride in making sure that I communicate effectively with stakeholders and that I really take ownership in everything that I work on. Great stuff. And uh, you actually passed the exam on 30th of uh, December, 2022. So I did. What a, way to, yeah, what a way to finish the year and getting into the next year with the exciting PMP with you. Yes, that was my goal was to take it and pass by the end of the year. I took a few months to study 
And so I said, all right, I'm going to take it. And it, if I pass, it'll be a great New Year's gift. And gift so, yes. yeah, it was, it was great because, yep, I passed and I was very happy and excited. Yeah, fantastic. So look, uh, all, you know, PMP certificate or PGMP, PFMP, all are great certificate from PMI, as many of you already know. And uh, of course, these things uh, does not happen like this. And you need to have a lot of preparation. You need to have a right guide, right mentor, right books with you. Uh, with, with PMP, especially with PMP, uh, PMI has not defined specific book. They're talking PM book seven, PM book six, or the another guide called the practice guide for uh, process groups. And then you have exam content outline. So there are so many things everywhere. And uh, PMI also have their own course. You know, that's where as an ATP, authorized training partner, we have to use that material. And that covers everything in there in the study material. So just uh, while other, other people, non-ATPs are also teaching, but they're, they're extracting some information from, from PMBOK or other places. But if you really want to get ready for the exam, I think you look for the ATP uh, provided training. Uh, love to see if you come to our programs, if you are taking others, but make sure you're taking uh, the, pro the program with ATP. And I'm sure they will, anybody ATP will a, uh, put a logo or you can ask them, are you ATP or your, tra your trainer is certified or not. All right, good stuff. Um, anything else you'd like to talk about yourself? Um, well, I think you basically hit all of the main things. Um, I'm originally from Illinois, which is a state up north, and um, I went to school at St. Mary's College in Notre Dame, Indiana. Um, got my bachelor's there, so my bachelor's is in business administration with a concentration in marketing. And I've been um, down here in Florida for about five years, ever since I graduated from college. And um, I love the weather down here, it's great. So uh, I definitely see myself staying here for the long term. Um, but yeah, that's just kind of a little bit about my background. I'm still pretty young in my career. Um, I'm 27. So I'm just looking forward to all the opportunities that the PMP will bring me. Good stuff. You look, I know great career I had you ahead of you. So my best wishes to you. And I'd like to see you progress and you do bigger and better programs, projects, you know, who knows, you know. Having right attitude, and uh, I'll tell you one thing. And I, I have one, 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 I mean, a few people came to me, and this, at least one person came to me. Look, I'm already a director position. I want to be a C level person. And uh, this is my roadmap. I'm, I've done my PMP, I've done my ACP, I've done RMP, and in this year, that year, last year. And I'm going to do PGMP. He actually, he did PGMP with me and PFMP with me, five certificate in one year. He enrolled himself to one of the uh, MBA program. And uh, so what, why he's doing it, he has a structure, he has a plan, a roadmap, and moving towards his C-level position. Uh, wow. And exactly, so it, it has to be, I mean, oh, yeah, life do come with lots of uncertainties, but we do, we can do some planning and be ready, you know, be upfront, just like we do any project. We do risk management plan, we have a issue management happening, and we have all kinds of things we do, why not we apply to our life? So, you know, have a, have a, having a vision for yourself, what you're going to be in five years time, 10 years time, 20 years time, and, uh, you know, move toward that. All right, so That's let's fine. get started. So my first question to you, uh, what motivated you, motivated you to start your career in project management? Yeah, so as I mentioned to all of you at the beginning of this webinar, um, my degree is in business administration with a concentration in marketing. So um, that is definitely my passion, the marketing area. Um, I definitely see myself in marketing for the entirety of my career. And I actually kind of stumbled into the project management side of marketing um, about two years after I graduated from college. So I first um, started after college with an internship at Disney. So I worked for Disney Parks and Resorts here in Orlando. So I did a year long internship and then I was a coordinator for about nine months after that. And it was all in marketing strategy, which I really liked that area. I thought it was great. Um, and 
it allowed me to learn more about the creative agency world and what information they need as graphic designers and copywriters and videographers um, in order to do their job as they um, need to. And that basically that role kind of led me into my next role at Experience Kissimmee, which was, um, so it's basically a destination marketing organization. And so when I made that transition to that company, I took a role and it was more on the project management side, but I felt like my my experience over at Disney really helped me kind of understand exactly what the creative agency needed um, from us as project managers. And so I felt like that role would be a really good fit for me. Um, I felt like I was a very detail oriented person and I was very organized and I just felt like it's, it sounded like something that I wanted to do. So I thought that I would try it. And so I was at Experience Kissimmee for about two and a half years. Um, as a marketing project coordinator, I really loved the project management side of marketing and I, I determined that I wanted to continue doing that. And so um, last year, uh, back in March of 2022, that's when I joined Universal as a marketing project manager over here. And I absolutely love it. And uh, I definitely see myself just continuing down that marketing project management path. So that's kind of how I got into it. I didn't start off in the, the project management area necessarily, but I kind of eventually stumbled into it. I, I think that's the journey of most of the project managers uh, because there's no specific courses, just yeah. like we can go to engineering, we can go to accounting, we can go to doctor, medical, but we don't have any courses in universities. Yes, we have some you know, small courses, but there's no degree in the project management. So most people come with the MBA or, or engineering or some kind of a certification, or maybe they grow from as a, as a technical person. And one day they either they're replacing another project manager or a special requirement happen uh, and special project happen. And they said, okay, you are a technical person. You are a great person. And uh, they put you, you know, it happened to me actually. They put me into the project management in 2000. And I was actually, I'll let me tell you actually, I was a very technical person. And uh, in the previous year, I was recognized as system engineer of the year. So any problem with the telecom, the billing system, I know how to solve. So that's what my, my specialization. And uh, I, got, I became technical team leader within you know, a few months and then opportunity came and I became project manager. Uh, and, and as I said, it's a more like accidental, no plan, but the, but my technical hat was still with me. I like to talk about that actually. My technical hat was with me. So whenever there were problem coming, any, anything problem, so, hey guys, leave it alone. Let me solve it for you. So I realized that actually as a project manager, this is not my role actually. I, my role is to make my team and my, empower my team to do or solve the problem and encourage them to solve the problem. So that's what I learned my biggest lesson. But yes, I learned my lesson in a hard way. And, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm glad I, I, I made the journey and become project manager and then program manager and the rest is history. I'm teaching project management PMPs and PGMPs and PFMPs. Uh, some of you probably know that uh, I'm more, I'm specialized more in PGMP and PFMPs. And uh, that's where I have contributed around 12% of global PGMPs and PFMPs. I'm very happy about that. And uh, yeah, PMP is another thing I'm doing, but I, you know, I have a team who can look after, who's looking after the PMP courses, but I do look after the personal program. If somebody say, Dharam, I really want to learn from you. And, uh, you know, I don't want to go to the group program. Fantastic, no worries. I can also take care of you as a personal program or the corporate program, which, uh, that's what uh, Jamie and other, other, uh, other colleagues from Universal Studio came to me. Uh, I think there was a big, good, good group. And uh, some of you already got PMP, some of them are in the process of getting All right, so my next question is, do project management certification aid you in upskilling and improving the competency of the next generation project manager? Yeah, absolutely. I feel like the going through the process of studying for the PMP and taking the exam, I felt like it really gave me a lot of tools and techniques as to 
how to best manage projects overall. Um, and it has really just given me ideas in my current role, like how I can improve um, just in my day to day when I plan for projects and when I execute projects with the creative team. Um, and I just feel like as a whole, if you're you know, on the fence about thinking of um, taking your PMP and getting that certification, I would say um, the PMP just really kind of gives you that big picture of generally, you know, how should a project be managed and, um, you know, what's the flow from the beginning to end, um, especially thinking about each and every process group that we go through or that the, um, the PMBOK guide outlines. And I think that it's really important to understand how everything can flow back and forth. It's never like a set, um, a set order. It can kind of like go back and forth. And sometimes you have to, you have to go back to a certain step that you had already addressed because projects are ever changing, right? So I think the PMP just really allowed me to get into what mindset should I have as a project manager? Because every organization has different processes of how they do projects. And so I think the, the certification and just all of the different project management certifications out there, I think can just really give you an overall sense of what that big picture is and what mindset should you have on a day-to-day -day basis when you're working through projects. I think it's meant to be kind of a template that you can use um, and then you can customize that to fit your needs and how the organization that you work for um, manages projects as a whole. So um, I think that's another thing too that I learned from the PMP is just what's the difference between traditional and agile and hybrid types of projects. And I feel like um, you're able to really kind of take some of those key tools and techniques from all three of those areas and customize it to your your particular project. So absolutely, I think these certifications really help us as next generation project managers, um, me being one, I just think it really has set me up for success. Definitely. Now, this, these certifications are going for a long time now. I think the PMI started uh, PM, PMP 95, 96, and uh, you know, it's a very slow start for them, a uh, little bit of history. And uh, the initially, when, when they were running the, you know, the PMP, you actually have to literally fly to one of the major cities, the US, and uh, do eight hour exam and uh, written exam. And I'm telling you, you know, if you think that this current exam is difficult, that time you have to write your essays and you fly in. Why I know this? Because one of my students in PGMP, he said, I'm from Australia, he was from Melbourne. He has to take a flight to come to LA for eight hour exam. Of course he passed, but he, he has to write big essays around the project management concept. And uh, since then, PMI has improved a lot and the PMP exam has improved a lot. I did my exam in 2004. Uh, it was based on second edition. Now we have seventh edition and, uh, you know, seventh edition plus exam content outline plus uh, process group uh, practice guide uh, and the various other documents you have to refer. Now, it is, it is more than 1.3 million uh, PMPs globally. So if you are project manager or if you are in the project, project manager space, uh, I think you should get a PMP as soon as possible. Uh, because if you know, as you can see, when you apply for a job, around 75% already have the PMP certificate. And how I'm how I know this? One of the you know, when I got uh, selected for a job uh, as a senior project manager in Telstra in, back in Australia, um, I had my discussion with uh, my my the uh, my recruitment company, the representation from that. And you are very excited and that you're very lucky for the job. I had 115 applications on this job. Okay, uh, tell me why you picked me. You know, out of 115, it's a good number. And what was your strategy? Why, why, actually, I got curious to know because that can help many people here. I said, tell me why you decided to put me in front of your, uh, you know, your customer and uh, that to major tel you know, telecom. So look, uh, that, um, uh, we get around uh, you know 20, 30 applic 30 percent application, which is interstate or international. We can eliminate them. 
then we have some application which is coming they have never done project management or a junior project manager we didn't consider them so we can just eliminate them now we still have around 80 applications so what we do we run scanners you know some kind of computer application they will look for the keywords such as pmp and that help us to eliminate around 30 to 40 percent applications which is a good number so think about like uh, you are a great project manager you have 30 years 20 years experience but you don't have pmp you already eliminated in the first round they have not even seen your application the system has seen computer has seen and uh, you are already eliminated so to get into the next level to be consider you have to have pmp you know it's not a marketing spell it's nothing like that this is my own experience and uh, then i say okay tell me more about okay i still you have 30 applications so the like uh, then we uh, we do few more checks and then we also look into your internet presence and uh, you know how you how, how kind of what kind of uh, articles you return and you know, that also also help plus i had pa pgmp at the time and few other certificate that that made me okay are they actually picked five five candidates and then along with them there were another three other organizations submitting their resume so you know out of so 15 or 20 of them i got picked <laughs> Yeah, that's great to hear. That's that's very interesting how a lot of organizations now when they're looking for project managers, they will only look at those who have PMPs. So that's definitely yeah. another huge reason why you should definitely consider it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, it, I, I do get a lot of people say, Dharam, I want to change my job, so, but I don't have PMP. So look, first thing first, you get into PMP. Without that, nobody will look for the application. Even, even they, unless you're going through network, your, your, your recommendations, uh, it's very difficult to get through the recruitment companies or hiring manager to uh, to see your resume even though you are the one of the best in your organization but when you change your job that that's where the problem starts anyway yeah all right good stuff thank you um and by the way guys you can put your questions as as and when you feel like um okay now we're going to get into the real questions what is the future of project management in 2023 and beyond I think it will definitely continue to grow in demand over the next few years, um, especially just because more and more companies are implementing project management practices, I think more than ever before, um, especially some industries I've heard that never really kind of used that format before. They've been implementing some of those different practices. And, you know, I keep hearing in the news too, more and more project managers are being hired and more roles are being created and there's not enough people to fill mm -hmm. them with those qualifications and so i think that is a great um a great news piece to us to hear that it just it keeps growing and i think that us as project managers will need to just be more technically skilled than ever before especially in the coming years um since businesses really have to keep up with that in order to maintain their competitive advantage. Um, so I think that as long as we just keep up and we make, make sure that we um, are learning all the new technologies that are coming on board, um, it'll just be more important now more than ever to get more project managers out there in the world. And more teams are also sp spread out globally. And so that, that allows people to connect with each other instantly and work at various times throughout the day. Um, so that's a really cool thing too. So that's kind of where I see the future of project management is just getting more technologically advanced and project managers needing to make sure that they keep learning and keep um, trying to implement some of those into their day-to-day -day processes. Yeah, actually, this is a very uh, good timing for you know, for, you know if somebody who's thinking of getting into project management. This is, uh, I think, best time. Actually, let me tell you. Yesterday, I did a, a webinar for PMI Excellence Chapter. You know, Central Excellence. You probably know that. So it's a U.S. in USA. There's a state called Excellence. So I did a webinar for the chapter. Uh, that was about the project economy. And I was talking about, you know, number of jobs going to be increasing in this space for project managers. One is because 
the lots of project managers are in the you know later part of their age, so they are retiring, and uh, and and uh, and now a lot of jobs opportunities are also created being created because of uh, new initiatives, new things happening around the world. So I think I mentioned around 80, 80 million jobs in the project management uh, in next uh, two or three years, which is a big number. I mean, uh, I mean. Uh, uh, it's, it's so much, so much to, you know, it's actually a very exciting time. A uh, lot of good tools that are coming up in the market and so platform services. And, and I can see a question already on, uh, on the, on the question pad around the chat GPT and how it's impacting. We'll take the question as, as there are a lot of exciting things happening, whether we're talking artificial intelligence and chat GPT and machine learning, whether it's impacting, going to impact our project management work positively. I mean, they can be positive. Actually, the art, I see they're more positive rather than negative. Uh, people are worried. Yeah, people are worried about their impact on the job. Yes, you may not be doing, you know, some of the repetitive work. They can be taken care of by the machine or the system, but you can be more focused on stakeholder engagement, building relationship with your your clients and your your team members, and get the work done rather than worrying about admin work, at reporting, and all kind of thing. If you have a real-time system and you have a chat GPT or whatever, you know, everything happens so fast, but you focus on end goal, get the things done. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that leads into our next question, Dharam, about AI. And I think that was a great kind of tie-in, how that one question kind of leads into this next one that we'll talk about. Yeah, before I go to that question, I have a, another question on the, on, uh, on the pad. Will sure. chat GPT, and advanced language model replace project managers for planning, scheduling, and taking care of scope creep. So I think that AI chat GPT, I think it'll definitely not replace project managers. I think um, you know it's it's so important that we have um, that human connection still within businesses and organizations. I think AI will never fully replace humans. Um, I think it's a great tool. I think it'll be a very helpful tool to help us with several different, uh, as you said, Durham, some of those routine tasks that right now us project managers do, but I think it will just be an aid so that it, we can make better decisions and we can focus more time on planning and we can focus more on like strategic alignments rather than some of those daily routine tasks. Um, so that's kind of where I I see AI coming in. Um, I know there's definitely concern with technological advances. Like, oh no, um, is is that going to impact um, the amount of jobs out there for project managers? But I I personally feel that it's just going to really aid us and allow us to spend our time focusing more on um, challenging areas like planning the project, making those really um, complex decisions and making sure that everything gets gets done and out the door um, on time and according to strategy. Exactly. So look, uh, I I mean, my next question and all the questions on the pad, I will read both of them and uh, and then see if we can combine them. So yeah. the question, next question is, what challenges do project managers face when they invest more in AI for risk management, decision making? knowledge management, data analytical skills, and many other tasks. Yeah, so as I mentioned before, I really think that AI will never really replace humans because I think it's so important for us as humans to have that connection with everyone. And even if AI does get like really technologically advanced, I think humans will always be needed to double check things and make sure, well, does that fit our strategy? Does that make sense? Um, and so I think that project management involves a lot of that, you know, complex communication skills, which I don't think AI would be able to replace something like that. Um, you know, the ability to be empathetic and have that emotional intelligence. I don't think that a machine will ever be able to really replace that. So I think us as project managers will always be needed. Um, and I think that 
we also really appreciate you know the creative artistry and the work of other humans um and i think as consumers too when you're looking at um, from a marketing perspective buying um, a specific product you want to have that connection with someone you want to be able to relate to something you don't want to just you know see oh it's just a, mach a machine talking to me right now that's not as as effective or personal so um i think overall we as project managers will still have to communicate effectively with stakeholders we'll have to ensure all of the knowledge is documented correctly that that the ai is is documenting everything um when the ai is analyzing kind of some of that data and presenting some insights you know us taking a look at that and seeing um yes that makes sense or oh, that's not really relevant for this project um so i think we just need to understand how we can best leverage these uh, ai technologies while doing all of these things um but as i said I, I really think in certain aspects it can save time on a lot of those manual and mundane tasks that we do day to day that take a lot of time and it will allow us to really spend more time on making sure that um, the project outcome is the best it can possibly be. Yeah, and, and actually, you know, while you're talking, I'm getting excited as well because I can see this is a, a helping us as a helping hand. And a lot of things we do as we, we talked about repetitive work and we may have a starting point schedule, we may have some alerts happening because you have identified the risk and the system can get repeat, can help you potential risk. You can keep an eye, they can keep an eye and give you alerts on the system. Hey, the, the risk is about to happen. Take some action. You work with the team, work with your stakeholders to you know, make this happen. So yes, machine will help you. All this machine, uh, I'm excited about it. I actually have a system. If you somebody want to know about it, I can definitely tell you that system is coming already with the artificial intelligence and few other things, which can do your job in terms of uh, scheduling and risk management. Some of them, uh, not everything. Uh, at some level and which can free up your time to do meetings and uh, do the uh, do the right thing with your stakeholders okay um next you know, i have a question here uh, and it's a similar will ai take over our management jobs and be a superior to us particularly in terms of time management uh, stakeholder negotiation administrative administrative activities yeah, I mean, as I said, I think some of those administrative activities, definitely it can take over some of that. And I think that's a good thing, right? But I don't think that AI, AI will ever take over um, or be superior to us in regards to just negotiation and, and managing your all of your team and your stakeholders. Because as I said before, I think like humans crave other human connection, and I don't think a machine can ever replace that. Um, I think other people can be very motivating for individuals working on projects, and you have a sense of belonging and a sense of, you know, like you're a part of a team. And so I think um, as, as humans, we will always need that interaction. So I don't see AI taking over that specific area, just maybe some of like the um administrative tasks or things that take us a long time to do and now it'll free us up some time to really focus on planning our projects and making sure that um, everyone is in agreement with how to move forward on certain aspects and um things like that so exactly and and as i said you know this is this can be opportunity for us as the project managers uh, to see how this new technology, the upcoming technology is, is going to help us to do our job better. And uh, because I've seen project managers are always on the pump and uh, very, very stressed. And uh, they're worried about the, they, I've not seen the, you know, worried about the project milestones. Rather, they're worried about reports on Friday morning. And what? Yeah, uh, exactly. This can be taken over by somebody else. It will be great, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And you can take a look at that report. And even if it does get advanced to the point where it's able to kind of generate some of those insights for us, you know, you can read over that, but then really kind of consider how does that impact several different areas that you're trying to manage. Um, 
And I think it will just be an aid. So if it can create those reports for us, great. Now I can use that to help me with my decision making. Exactly. And as I said, um, I am connected with one of the system being uh, is actually produced. It's available for people to use it. And uh, we call it VXDCC. And uh, it says that everything in one system and, uh, you know, sales and project management, program management, portfolio management, operations, finance, and resource management, all in one platform. And, uh, you know, Lot alert system is working. Warnings are coming for because something is about to about to go wrong. Uh, very very powerful. That's right. Uh, it, it has all the con consideration about AI and machine learning and help you to streamline your work. Let it be on auto auto autopilot, and you focus more on bigger and better things. All right. I mean, let me take one more question. Are we hitting an acceptance acceptable recession because of AI? I think so. Hmm, that's an interesting question. Um, I mean, honestly, I'm, I mean, I personally am just really excited by, by AI um, and just what it means from, you know, just a, a human intelligence perspective and how far we've come in humanity, just figuring things out. And um, I really just think that it'll improve jobs and companies will be, will be able to produce or um, get projects out even faster and more efficiently than ever before. So I feel like it will just help our economy overall. That's kind of yeah. how I see it. Yeah, I mean, uh, this recession is not, I don't think this is because of AI, it's, it's uh, because of the high interest rate and COVID impact, uh, yeah. you know, that and the supply chain problem going on. These are things hitting at the moment. And, and for the project managers, this is the right time to upskill yourself before uh, it start hitting you in the you know with the job cuttings that are happening something so you more you would rather be prepared than you know something happen now you are next morning you wake up and you have no job rather than that uh, you actually are ready for the next job I'll, I'll tell you one thing and my own experience i was working in a company back in australia for eds seven years with the company and uh, and this is uh, for the bank for the one bank, they they reduce the contract, shake the contract, and that means 500 people have to leave the job. And I was one of the lucky one. I call lucky one. And uh, <laughs> it, because I got uh, in via notification from my manager, but somehow I survived that uh, that time. So now I know that this can happen to me. And that was October, November time when first time they came to me. And uh, then by this time. It came next time to me in Jan uh, March. My resume was up to date. My resume was already with lots of recruitment companies, and uh, I was kind of ready. When they called me, I said, "Okay, thank you," and uh, they gave me uh, some good payout because I think I got uh, six months pay or something like that in advance. Why not? And uh, they they helped me with the job finding job job assistance program. That's where the reason. I actually came out from uh, the working life to my own company. It took me a long time to come out of the working life, but that was the starting point for me. And uh, a moment, the day I finished uh, with EDS, um, Saturday, Friday, Monday morning, I was joining a, another company in, in Sydney itself. So I took that as a positive, and uh, you know, I was PMP certified and other other experience certificate also helped me to get into the next job even before I finished my the last job. So I see that as an ad advantage for me. And uh, that was a blessing happened to me, six months pay in advance and you know job assistance program, lots of interview tips and other things. And job in hand or starting job next day. And and uh, guys, uh, no, look, uh, I, I, this is my story, but you need to be, uh, you know, think about your current situation. What else you have to do to be job ready. Yes, whether it's AI, learning about AI or cloud technology or uh, IoT or anything else, the black blockchain, learn about that. Because you want to be ahead of game, okay? Not behind, because uh, when, you, when let's say something happened on Monday morning, uh, you are expecting you go to leave in the morning and realize that you have an email from the manager from, see, it happened to a few people. Uh, your, your access is removed. And you don't have to go to office you will have no notice nothing at all 
So it is a pressure and that become actually that's a very, very uh, stressful situation, especially if you are the only person uh, working in the house, in a car, you know, if you're, you're the person working or I mean, a single person working and uh, suddenly and you have a small kids or small thing, you know, so this can put a lot of pressure on you financially or mentally or many other things can happen. So be ready. My single message is be ready for any such situation. See what else can you do to be more marketable, to be more ready for any such situation, whether it's a certificate, whether it's a, you know, you know, any other courses you want to do, MBA, PGMP, PFMP, anything like that. Uh, please do that. Look at that. Or if you are in doubt, talk to me. I will be happy to work, work with you, guide you on this, whether certification, PMP is important, uh, will help you, or maybe PGMP, PFMP can work better for you. Who knows? So at least talk to me and, uh, and who knows, uh, that can be a you know, life-changing moment. All right, so we are getting lots of questions. So let me move to the next question before I come to these questions. All okay. right, uh, how does emotional intelligence help project managers build a meaningful relationship with stakeholders, project sponsors, and team members? So I think emotion, emotional intelligence is extremely important. Um, over the course of my career so far, I've worked to really make sure that I improve those skills that I have, um, because I think that emotional intelligence just really helps you not, not only understand why others may be feeling a certain way and what that root causes, but it also helps you understand like, what am I feeling right now and how am I coming across to other people? And once you kind of analyze the situation and what the overall feelings are amongst your stakeholders, your sponsors, your team members, and then what you're feeling too, then you can adjust how you're communicating so that you're better meeting everyone's needs, right? Because we all have different personalities. We all communicate a little bit differently. So I think it's very important to be aware of um, your own communication strengths and weaknesses and how you're feeling and how you're coming across um, and then how others might be as well. And sometimes that just that takes a while because you have to build a relationship and get to know someone um, over time. But I think doing this and making sure that you're building your skills and emotional intelligence, I think will really allow you to build trust with all of your stakeholders, because if there's no trust, then that means, you know, your team could feel unmotivated, they could feel disengaged, and then that will make your project overall suffer. And I feel like I have really um, tried to hone in my ability to remain calm and composed, even if like the situation is kind of there's a lot of tension there or there's like a conflict arising because if you remain calm and composed in the situation, then that will prevent it from escalating even further. And it could, you know, really allow your stakeholders or your team members to feel like they're being heard and that um, you care as, you know, a person, because as I kind of mentioned before, it, human communication and connection is just all extremely important in the working world and within project management as a whole. So you want to make sure that you are thinking about not only what others are feeling and what they are trying to communicate to you, but how are you coming across and what, how can I communicate more efficiently with everyone and make sure that I'm meeting their needs. Yeah. So I think emotional intelligence is one of the most important skills. Every project has project manager has to look into because you're working with human and uh, they have emotions. So are we connecting at the right level? And uh, because people do go through the life, life cycle and uh, sometimes they're excited, sometimes something happening. So you as a project manager, you can't just keep demanding. You need to think what's going on with my, my, my staff, my person, my team member. Um, maybe they need somebody to listen. Maybe somebody can guide them, help, help them. So all these things help you to build rapport with your, your team members. And when you have rapport, when you have a, you know, on the same wavelength, uh, you know, you, you understand each other. You understand them and they also understand you when, especially when your, your project is not in the right direction. 
the deadlines are going to miss they will come and help they help you out it happened to me many times uh, with this you know when my when they was uh, not having good time i'm listening to them i'll i'll listen to them and actually solve some problem which helped them to focus more and when my project was really in a, you know about to miss the red line the same person came to me look garam i will not go home until i fix the problem and i know it's very important for you and for the project i will finish the pro i will solve the problem then only i will come back that was because we have relationship okay all right so um okay let me take another question and i'm i see the same question asked again uh, let me take that what's the latest in regard to pmp are there revision to pemba so let let me take this question so look uh, pmi has recent yeah pmi has recently changed the book from 6th edition to 7th edition and it is principle based domain based uh, book and it's a good book but also you need to read uh, the practice guide for process groups so whatever there was in 6th edition they all, they actually put those processes into into the process guide and uh, the exam content outline is also very important so these are the base material for pmp and uh, and uh, atp level uh, pmi has released uh, the third edition of the material uh, i think when jamie you were studying with me it was second edition now it is third edition came out and that's for atp pmp prep program and this is very mature uh, material so if anybody into the atp learning if you are going to atp they should be giving or they will give you a, a material which is uh, i like actually very much as a trainer and uh, you will love it because very structured and everything is placed very very nice um exam is already changed so i don't see any ex any changes happening in coming days from the pmp side all right so rest assured whatever books whatever available at the moment uh, can continue for at least for two to three years um i don't want i don't think they will change that fast anything else. all right okay so my next question is do you think collaborative work workspaces aid in improving project outcomes Yes, I definitely think um, it's very important whether you're a team that works in an office together or maybe you're a team that uh, there's team members spread across the world. I think it's really important that um, you have some sort, sort of space, whether that's in person or um, virtually where you all can come together and talk things through. So if you are in an in-person office, I think having you know, a meeting room where you all can meet face to face is a really great idea. Um, if you are working with a team that's across the entire world, set up an online chat for instant messaging so that you can reach your team members um, as quickly as possible. And I think like for in my situation, for example, um, we are a, a hybrid environment right now. So three days a week we're in the office and two days a week we get to work remotely. And so um, those three days a week, it's great because we get to see each other face to face. And then a couple of days a week, we just do things virtually. But on those two days that we are remote, we make sure that we have our instant messaging up on our screen so that we can talk to someone as quickly as we need to. If we need to give them a call, uh, we can do that and we can see each other face to face um, on the screen. So I think that's that's really helpful. Um, and I think it's helpful too to, um, if you are virtual, make sure that you share your screen so that people can read your facial expressions and your body language as much as possible because that really kind of ties back into how am I coming across to this person and how can I meet their needs? And so um, I think that it's really important to have certain um, tools and techniques set up, whether you're in, in the office working together in person within the same physical space or you're online in a virtual environment. Um, but I also think, you know, it's, it's a great thing nowadays that a lot of companies are hiring people from all over the world because you can instantly connect with people and it's also bringing um, a lot of really unique talent with diverse backgrounds 
diverse experiences, perspectives, and that can really like benefit a project as a whole. And so I think it's just really important to, no matter where you are, no matter where your team members are, just keep in constant communication with them. So because you're all on the same team and you're all working towards the same goal. So it's very important to collaborate in some sort of workspace. Yeah, fantastic. Good. Yeah, definitely collaboration is important, whether it's physical collaboration, or maybe using some kind of a tool just like this, you know, Zoom or go to make a webinar or maybe Teams, anything like that can help you to create a collaborative workshop, workspace, physical or virtual doesn't matter, but it is, you know, it's very important for a project manager to build some network or connections with your people. Anyway, good stuff. Thank you. Uh, guys, I have shared the PDU code on the chat. So please take a note of that. Uh, course identifier and claim code. Uh, take it. Um, you need to write it down somewhere or copy paste. And also I have announced uh, there is a 25% discount to our upcoming PMP or CAPM uh, group mentoring or virtual boot camps. And the class is planned in whatever class we have in the May or June. Uh, 2023, whether it's with me or with my my partners around the world, and uh, so yeah, please let me know. You have to email me that I'm ready. I want to join. Uh, which program I can join? 25% discount is a huge discount, but uh, you need to be very quick. All right. Okay. Um, yeah. So we still have a few questions to go, and uh, I think we still have time. Uh, we'll that looks like a little bit over time. Let's see. Sure, but yeah, no please problem. keep yeah, and keep putting your questions. I'm okay to cover as many as we can. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let me take a question from uh, from the from the question pad. Do next gen PMs be better risk management expert? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I think as next generation project managers. Um, I think we, I mean, me personally, but I, I do think that our generation has um, really learned how to be flexible and they are able to really kind of see what some of those risks are than um, maybe someone who's older and they've been doing kind of the same job for a long time. Maybe we're able to kind of come in and, and have some more ideas or we're able to spot something for. Um, so I feel like our generation we really kind of learned that there's a lot of change that comes within um, project management all the time and we need to be on alert um, constantly because things can change extremely fast so yeah i mean it's a, it's a good question look risk management is uh, one of the it, it should be one of your one of your strengths whether you're a new or uh, you know uh, newly starting or you have been working in this industry for the last 20, 30 years, doesn't matter. Risk management, I would say, is has to be one of your strengths. And uh, whether you have a tool or uh, you know having a right platform, uh, very important to have a right platform, common language, and uh, actually you should be able to foresee what is about to happen. That comes with some based on some experience as well. You talk to the you talk to the to the SMEs. Collaborate with them to understand what can go wrong. So, you know, yes, you know, as a as a as a new, is this generation of uh, project managers, they are also good project uh, risk managers. One is because they have access to data, lots of uh, information available now, and uh, you know, you have a you know archives of uh, previous lesson learned that can also help you. And uh, maybe you can ask a Chat GPT. They can <laughs> help you. <laughs> Yeah, no, I I completely agree, Dharam. I think um, being able to be um, really good at identifying risks is extremely important. I know in my role, there are always risks being thrown at us as project managers all the time, and we have to be able to identify them and then either, you know, escalate them to our leadership or, you know, come up with solutions. Like, what are some of those backup plans? How could we mitigate these risks? Um, and what are the options here so that we can still either get the project delivered on time or we can still create the best result possible in the end for the project. That's really important, just 
making sure that you're constantly um, assessing, identifying, and communicating what those risks are and what we could potentially do about it. Exactly. All right, so I will take the next question. How well do the next generation project managers handle the constraints in projects that do not meet time and budget goals? Yeah, I would say, as I kind of mentioned before, I think our generation has been doing fairly well with some of the constraints in regards to time and budget goals, because now more than ever, our world requires us to be extremely flexible and adaptable. Um, I mean, I know in my personal role that happens quite often where details or components of the project will change at the last minute and you weren't expecting them to. And you just have to be really nimble and you have to roll with it. You can't take the time to dwell on it because things in, in our company move really fast. And so you have to just, just go with it and not kind of dwell on the fact that, oh, this is this is changing. I was not expecting that. You have to kind of just, um, you know, accept it and move, move forward. So I think because it's happening so often nowadays, I think next generation project managers um, handle it quite well because we expect it now and we are able to embrace it. Um, it's, I think it's just, as I said before, it's really important that we're just communicating um, those constraints and those risks that we're seeing to our leadership, our stakeholders, our sponsors, team members, so that everyone's on the same page and we're all aware of like what's going on and what are some of those options that we can consider so that the team can talk it through and we can agree on how to move forward. And I think, you know, it's important for us as project managers to give them the recommendations that we have and then also say, well, if we go with this option, here's the positives about that route, and here are the negatives of that. But if we went this way, here's positive and negative. So based on all of this, this is what I recommend that we do. And it's just best to over communicate. If you think you, you know, are communicating enough, it's best that you maybe communicate even more. I think that's just really important in our industry is just to over communicate with everyone to make sure everyone's on the same page, everyone agrees. Um, because I think there's a lot of different time and budget goals that uh, are very hard to obtain sometimes. And you just have to communicate with your team as to um, what's happening with those. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the question is, how do PMP have, uh, have to prepare themselves to work in AI effectively? Yeah, so as I, I think I said this before, but I would just recommend that you stay informed, right? Um, you make sure that um, if you are learning that there's more AI things coming in um, or more updates to the AI technology coming in, like stay informed about it, read about it, make sure that you're up to date. If your organization is planning on implementing some of this technology, ask as many questions as you need because it's all new to us. It's all new for humans across the entire globe. So um, I would just say like, always ask questions, make sure you are understanding what's going on. How is this impacting your role in the organization? And then also just as a team, like be flexible and be agile with it. Test out a certain process maybe and it's okay if it doesn't work you can talk about it as a team and figure out what didn't work about it and try something different and find out what works best for you in your industry and don't be afraid of failure or maybe not understanding it quite or right away i would just like keep learning about it keep talking about it with all of your colleagues and um find find a way to incorporate the technology in a way that works best for everyone Exactly. Uh, look, uh, AI is here, so we, we, you know, we don't have to wait. So it's actually happening artificial intelligence and chat GPT. So we have talked about this enough. So how do PMP or a project manager professional have to prepare themselves for working? So you need, you know, of course, as you mentioned, make being aware and, uh, you know, utilize some tools and techniques. And how can I utilize this as an opportunity? Now, answer of a risk. So, yeah. 
the, the question we had was, uh, what do you think about power scale in project management? Now we got lots of explanation about the power scales. Thank you guys. And uh, the power scale is, uh, you know, so power scale has uh, the uh, composition of uh, the leadership skills, empathy, and you know how you work with your team members. So that's the thing we're talking. About. Okay, so emotional intelligence, collaboration, critical thinking, problem solving. So yeah, I mean, I would say they're extremely important. I think um, all of those different aspects that you had just mentioned, Dharam, um, I think really kind of qualifies and sets you up to be a leader within the industry. So I think it's really important to really hone in on your soft skills and make sure that you're thinking about, you know, that emotional intelligence and, and trying to think about how can I improve and be a better project manager for all of my team members? Um, what what is some of the different aspects that I do in my role every single day that I can approve upon? I think that's really important because that establishes trust between you and all of your team members. Um, because I think if you don't have trust, then the project could really like go downhill really fast and you're not able to recover after that sometimes. So it's really important to have those leadership skills. Yeah. So look, uh, as, a, as a project manager, you are also a servant leader. You have to create an environment where where your, your team can perform uh, the way you like to see, or maybe beyond your, their expectations. That happens because you have created an environment. You are looking after them. Any anything about to happen, risk you identified, and you remove the you know barriers. And uh, all these skills are very very important. Uh, collaboration, critical thinking, and the you know, team building, and leadership all very important. So yeah, you know. This, yeah, the good news is these skills cannot be replaced by chat GPT or any other future uh, technology. So just, you know, you can build those things and improve on that. Uh, don't worry about too much about chat GPT at this stage. All right, um, my last question, uh, let's see if this is the last. Uh, where do you see down the track, eight to 10 years, when technology like AI, ML, and chat GPT, et cetera, will have more penetration across the industry most of the routine repetitive tasks and slowly being taken over by automation nowadays we have talked a lot about it but let's see yeah no absolutely um like i mentioned before i think ai will really kind of help us with some of those routine tasks um and i think that it'll help us analyze data and create some insights but as humans i think that um you know, we really need to still like analyze all of that information that it provides mm -hmm. us and figure out, okay, what does this mean for me and my project and my team? And how can we best implement that? Um, and you have to also consider like AI can really help us focus on some of the more important aspects of our job instead of some of those really mundane, repetitive tasks that take up a lot of time in our day. Um, I think that AI can also help out maybe with like project statuses and updates and maybe even scheduling meetings for us. Um, I know sometimes even that just takes up some time is just finding a time that works for everyone and making sure that everybody's free and there's an available conference room or, you know, setting up the, the call. If it can just do that within an instant, that's perfect. That saves me, saves me sometimes five or 10 minutes of me trying to spend time looking for, um, you know, a, a conference room and the time that works for everyone. And um, I think it'll also help with providing maybe some resource allocation suggestions like, oh, this person is busy or this happened, maybe um, maybe we can have this person jump in and help instead. So I think those are kind of the main areas that I see AI really affecting and penetrating over the next decade or so. Um, but as I as I said, I think some of those really important project management tasks like solving complex problems and communicating and negotiating, that's something that a machine can never replace. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Very well said. Uh, thank you very much, Jamie. It's, uh, you know, you shared, you know, lots of information today and very insightful information. And, uh, I mean, uh, while you're talking and questions being asked i also learned from this process so you know thank you and i hope we can give uh, some kind of a free uh, trip to universal studio one person something 
we don't have that. <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely recommend you guys, uh, you know, come come to one of our parks. Um, we have some just really exciting things for you to enjoy, um, either by yourself or with your family and friends. So I hope you all get to to come and experience our parks at some point. Um, and yeah, we just have a lot of exciting things coming as well. Great. But, so thank you very much and thank you all of you staying late and uh, you know beyond our time and uh, I, 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 I hope you got something out of this and you, you gain some knowledge and hopefully that can be you can apply that in your day to day project management. Some of the things I have emphasized and I'm going to emphasize again, if you have not done the PMP look for doing it as soon as possible, whether with me my, with my company or somebody else doesn't matter, but be ready for the future. That's what the message is. Be ready for the future. Okay. And uh, there's advantage at the moment, 25% of the next, you know, the class is April, May, June. I well as in May, June, but April, May, June. And I, if you talk to me with the PMP, PGMP, PFMP, I can also, not 25%, but I can give you some discount. So reach out to me. I'm actually going to Germany next week. Yay, first time in Europe. Oh, that's exciting. Have fun. <laughs> Yeah, so first time running a program in Europe, uh, in Germany, Frankfurt. So I will be running PGMP program and PFMP program. PGMP on 8th, 9th, 10th of May. And uh, 5th, 6th, 7th, I will be running PFMP program. So first time in Europe. Europe is tough market for PMI certification, but I can see a lot of interest coming from that. So if you are in the Frankfurt area, please let me know. I love to see you, you know, have a coffee or something. Why not? Even if you are not joining in program, if you're there and you can guide me, you can, you can help me with my sightseeing. That would be good. <laughs> anyway, so look guys, um, you know, all in your hands now. So you make sure you look after yourself and uh, do the right thing, which can help you to grow your career and uh, be in command in your command should be in your hands, not your employers or, in, or somebody else. If you have a knowledge, if you have a experience, People still look for you. Look, you know, you are in demand. If you think that hey, just, you know, I will, you know, I'm okay. And don't just think that I got a certificate. It doesn't mean anything. You still need to be keep learning and keep growing. Certifications are, as I said, filter, which can help you in, in, to come in front of the, uh, possibly in front of the next level, maybe to in front of the interviewer. Uh, but at the end of the day, they look for not just certificate. They look for your expertise, experience, and how can you fit in the organization? All right. So the, all the skills, as we talk about emotional intelligence and power, you know, power skills and all kinds of things are very, very important to get into the job, into the job as well. Because people like to ask you question around, actually they will ask you situation questions that they want to know how you handle in this tough situation. All right. So thank you again. And thank you all of you uh, to, to part of the journey. And if you have not watched, there are so many videos. I think there are around 200 recordings available for you to watch on the YouTube, on my channel. And the discussion like this with Jamie and many, many people already gone through this journey. Uh, so I'm running this webinar twice a month. And I also have a podcast series. And I think there are more than 60 podcasts available. This is where I talk to you know three, three or four, four experts and uh, monthly i have three or four such web podcasts and those goes on the youtube and they goes on the linkedin lots of ways to learn so keep learning there are lots of free knowledge available guys so keep learning from them keep coming to the web webinars and uh, you know and become you know uh, if you're not connected please connect with me and connect with jamie and I, I hope to, uh, she's okay with uh, accepting the connection and yeah, absolutely. Might give you, feel free you know, yeah. Ask that for a free pass or something, or discounting pass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, please feel free to message me on LinkedIn. I'm happy to speak with you or um, accept your connection. So I hope that you uh, got something out of this today. Happy to be here. Thank you, Dara, for asking me to do this webinar with you. My pleasure, and it was an honor to have you in this in this webinar. And uh, you know the question asked by, by you guys are very very important because that made uh, us uh, because yes we have some questions which we are prepared for but most many of the questions you ask us you know we have been we don't know what we're expecting but I think that the way we 
answer them as a, a lot of people. So with this, uh, you know, thank you very much once again. Have a great weekend and uh, enjoy your life and stay healthy and happy. All right, take care, guys. Bye. Thank you.